Welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be building this boom box. This is part of a build-off challenge between Toys DIY Audio, Hi-Fi Vega, and myself. We're gonna judge these things live on our live stream and give you, our viewers, a chance to vote on who made the best boom box. So check the links in the description to find out how all that works. And we're gonna start with an unboxing as I'll walk you through the entire build. The boom box comes in two packages. This is the first one, this is the flat pack. The entire thing has been CNC cut out of birch plywood. And here you can see all of the pieces. This is the back right here. A passive radiator goes in that big hole in the back. There's the sides and the internal pieces. There's gonna be an internal sub enclosure for the two smaller drivers. Here are the tops. And down here we can see the front of the enclosure and you can see the grooves cut in the enclosure for that and some grooves for the amplifier mount. Now it looks like I had a little bit of damage in shipping. That's all right. A little bit of wood glue and some clamps. That'll bend right back out. No big deal at all. Hey, let's crack up with the other box and see what's in there. This box is chock full of goodies. Check this out right here. This is the mids and highs for this boom box. This is a bi-ampable coaxial driver with a three quarter inch tweeter mounted on the driver. Here is the amplifier. It's a Bluetooth amplifier with a ton of controls and functionality. It comes with an AC adapter. This right here is the battery board. This is a battery powered one. It comes with a passive radiator. For the subwoofer, we're gonna be using a Tang Band W5 subwoofer. I've heard great things about this driver. As you'll see in the video, this one's been slightly damaged. That's okay, Parts Express sent me a new one out when I told them about the damage. Here is the back side of that coaxial driver. As you can see, there's two sets of wires, two sets of terminals, so that you can buy amp this thing. I've been wanting to try this one out for a long time. Hey, let's get started on the build. But before we do that, I'm gonna put a little DIY audio guy magic touch on this enclosure. Check this out. I couldn't be happier with the way that turned out. Make sure you catch our live stream where we show off these things so you can hear the story behind that Glowforge. Now it's time to actually start the build. And the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna open up the instructions because there's some really important things in the instructions you've gotta know right off from the top. You've got to download these from the Parts Express webpage. It's worth your time to print these off and read through them, especially for this one thing right here. Before you put the box together, you've got to connect the DC power jack. This thing comes with an AC to DC converter. And what you want to do is take the small red and black wires that are included in the kit and solder these to the connection. Once the box is complete, you will not be able to reach this connector. So make sure you install it before you attempt to glue your box together. Now the instructions also said to use a handheld screwdriver for this, but I'm gonna be using a power driver. This is a small weak, ah, the cat's always in the way. Get out of the way, cat. Come on, you're ruining my shot. Now we're just gonna glue this thing up. I'm using Gorilla's wood glue this time. I have found this particular wood glue does a whole lot less damage and staining to plywood and hardwoods relative to Tight Bond 2, which was what I usually use, especially if you're going to stain or put a clear coat on the surface. If you're going to paint it, it really doesn't matter. I'm also a big fan of these silicone glue brushes. I'll make sure you get a link to this down in the description as well. Now you just go and you apply glue to all of the rabbits on the edge and make sure you get good glue coverage. Thank you. 
Now the instructions say to go ahead and complete the entire glue up at this point. I did not follow the instructions because I was worried about getting my very large hands into the tiny speaker holes on this boom box. It turns out there was plenty of room and I could have gone ahead and glued the top on at this point, or rather the front on at this point as well. I didn't do that. The instructions say you can use a minimal number of clamps. The right number of clamps is always one more clamp than you actually have. I went a little overboard with the clamps, so it was completely unnecessary. Now here in this shot, you can see that off camera, I went ahead and connected the speaker wires for the mids and highs in the two little small enclosures for the mids and highs. And here's why you want to go ahead and follow the instructions and do the entire glue up in one piece. It's a really tight fit getting the baffle onto the enclosure at this point. And so I had to get a little bit creative. I grabbed a couple of scrap pieces of wood, grabbed all of my clamps and gently forced it into place. It worked out just fine. It just would have been easier if I would just actually follow the instructions. And my advice to you if you want to build this kit is to go ahead and follow the instructions, do the entire glue up at once. And hey, while I'm waiting for that to dry, let me give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon with a special shout out to my newest patrons, King B and Rick. Hey guys, thanks for joining the team. Now it's time to work on the crossovers. And what I'm gonna do is make my own crossover board using some acrylic that I had left over from another project. What I'm gonna do here is just put some blue painter's tape on the acrylic and then take the crossover components and lay them out and mark where I'm going to have the wires coming through the acrylic. Then it's just a matter of taking the drill and drilling some holes so I can pass these wires through the board and I'll make the connections on the underside of the board. You can see in the shot up next to the little tub with the crossover components, I've got some small pieces of acrylic. I'm gonna use those as standoffs so I'll have some clearance underneath my crossover board. Since I'm working on a deadline here, I was a little bit pressed for time so I soldered up the crossover boards off camera. The glue's all dry on the enclosure, so I'm gonna grab a flush trim bed and stick it into my little handheld router here and just run that along the edges to make sure I've got nice smooth edges. Now I'm gonna hit it with some 220 grit to get it nice and smooth and ready to put a finish on it. But if you do this with a power sander, don't push hard. Let the sander do the work. I'm gonna follow that with three coats of Minwax Poly Shades. I'm going to sand it with 220 in between coats and I'm not going to use the power sander in between coats. It's too aggressive. It'll take the finish right off. And now it's time for the hardest part, fitting all these tiny little stuff into this tiny boom box and connecting all of the wires inside the boom box. Now this is a little bit frustrating. And so if you're building yours and you find it frustrating, don't get overwhelmed. I love the look of this acrylic plate that the amplifier is mounted to. That's a really nice touch. Now it's time to connect the drivers. Before you screw the subwoofer down, make sure you apply the gasket that was included in the kit. The kit's got everything you need. When you install the mids and highs, it's gonna be a very tight fit. There's barely enough clearance to get past the speaker terminals, but it is enough. After securing all the drivers to the baffle, You've got to attach the passive radiator. Before you do that, make sure you add the weights to the back of the passive radiator so you can tune it to your taste. What we really want to know is, how does it sound? Well, I've loaded up some YouTube approved music. Let's take a listen.